Welcome to the September 2014 Stamps by Judith and Heather Project of the Month. This month we're going to do a little bit of spooky, trick-or-treat, Halloween fun. And we have four different cards I'm going to create or show you the steps to create parts of them. And the first one we're going to get going with, let me move some of this, is this web card. Now what's kind of fun about this one is we've had this web for a fair number of years and the only way I ever thought to use it before, I don't know why it took me this long, was to take it, and put one there, and then maybe one there, and then cut one out and mount it across there. You use it on the corners of things. That's the way I always used it. Now, just to stop and think a little bit, and I can come up with a different way of using it. I'm going to take it, stamping in a quick drawing pad for watercolors. I am stamping on cardstock because I want it to be a little bit heavier. Turn this around so I can get four of them on here. Four spider webs. And I'm going to take and start by coloring in with a soft gray very quickly sort of outlining the whole thing and do that to all four web parts okay one more here all right there are four light gray webs. I'm going to take my dark gray and use the light gray to pick up a little bit of the color. I don't want to overwhelm the web. And if you wanted these a little more Halloween-y, you could add orange in there or lime green. Got that. And I'm going to take my dark gray and just add a little bit of dark gray here or there. Not a whole lot. I don't want to overwhelm it. I got some web marks. I'm going to go back in with my light gray. Put the right lids on the right markers. I'm going to grab sort of a soft teal color. Because webs do glisten colors of things around them. Let's throw this soft teal. Right. Don't forget the cross hatches of the web. Oh, and I'm going to throw a little bit of brown in there. The webs do get a little messed up when bugs land in them. And it doesn't really matter that I'm going outside the lines on the outside of the web. Because I'm going to take, once I got the color on there, I'm going to take these and quickly cut them all out. And for time saving's sake, I'm not going to cut into every loop. What I would do is cut around the basic shape of it, like that, and then just take and cut a divot in each one. And this saves on time and also gives you a little more stability on the outside of your web. Again, take and Cut it quickly and then just cut the loops out of the center. We'll do that four times. For these two I'm not going to spend, I'll just do the basic shape. Got the idea what I'm doing here. So I want to make sure I get all the ideas in that I want to show you. All right, 
more webs. Move my garbage. Now you do want to make sure when you cut your webs that on the outside of the edge you get them as close to the black line as possible. So I need to go back and trim a couple of these up. Because you want the lines to match as best as you can. Those. One more. Okay, now I have four webs. I'm going to take is a little bit of some double stick adhesive tape using some that's a little bit dimensional. Flip my web over and put a quarter of it on each web. So it's kind of lining up, overlapping the lines. Do that. And there, oops, I'm going to trim this one up a little bit more. Because if you leave the white outside edge, you can definitely tell that your webs are more separate. And you would have one continuous web and you would take your cardstock and you wouldn't necessarily need to put it in the corner you put it in the middle but I do recommend not putting it smack dab in the middle that has a tendency to throw the balance of your card off and take a little bit of the double stick tape and put down my off a little bit. Put down my cart. So there's my double stick. Now what's nice of this is you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You're using it to stick the web together and stick the web down. of the double stick backing. All right, we got our web. Like I said, I recommend you don't put it smack dab in the middle of your card, but a little more off to the side. I have it. And then we're going to make the webs on it. I'm going to take a ruler, and I like fine line pilot pens, and just take and draw your lines web extending out. And this is a water-based pen, so I do recommend after each use of wiping the edge. That way you're not dragging it or hitting your hand on it and then smudging later on. You do that every couple lines, wipe it off. It's just a handy trick I've found after many years of smudging things. And you would just go all the way around And even wiping things off, I still smudge it. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way around, but we get the idea. But you would continue your lines to do it that way. Okay. But you do want to add a little bit of color to your lines. So I'm going to go back in with the same colors I originally colored my web in and enhance those little web lines. Maybe not with the dark gray, but with the brown, the lighter teal, and the light gray. So then I have my web. And then the next step is you want to stamp some spiders. I have mine already stamped. And I colored their little eyeballs in. And you could stamp these on the web, but I like to make them a little dimensional. You could even put them on wire and have them popping out. And I leave their legs kind of attached. I don't get worried about getting into every little groove. Because that, you'll drive yourself nuts and the legs will get real spindly. So you take your little spider. Either use a little bit of double stick. Or 
take a glue stick. I really like the Scotch glue sticks just because they seem to hold really well. You would put your spider wherever you wanted him. You'd have your spiders. I'd have three on there. You always want to use odd numbers. And then you could take your sticks and stubbies. I have a little candy corn stubby. And you would have all your spiders trick-or-treating goodies stuck in the nets. If you didn't, or nets, in the webs, excuse me. If you didn't want the lines showing up, what I did on these is I actually cut them out and then glued them on so they popped out. Take that. And to clean my stamp, I blot it off on a damp paper towel that's just wet with water. And then the other candy is this little taffy. And I'm going to take my rainbow ink pad. And as long as I'm going up the color scale, I don't bother cleaning. I should make sure you clean your stamp before you use it, just in case I didn't clean it last time. Test it off once, then you can put little taffies stuck here and there. You can even put them up in your webs. Again, if you don't want the webs showing through the taffies, you can cut them out and glue them on. You would put them all around like that. And if you want to enhance those just a little bit, you can take a marker to that's kind of the similar tone of the candy and color it just a little bit. See on there how it popped it a little bit. And then when you're done, you have your trick-or-treat card all ready to go. So that's one fun idea. Next one, so a little bit of glue on here. Let me move that sheet. The next card is your witchy coffee. As they always say people aren't in their best frame of mind before they've had their cup of coffee. So what you need to start doing, we're just going to start off with our plain coffee cup stamp. There's just our plain coffee. Cup, and then you would stamp it on a second piece of paper. And then this is the hardest part. Part, and only that it takes a minute to do it. Take and cut out the coffee cup. I am leaving the bottom rim of the coffee cup. I'm helping you have double stick on your scissors. And I'm leaving the coffee part on there. This is the part I cut out. This is the part I'm keeping. So I'm going to take and cover up my coffee mug. I'm going to take my tall skinny witch stamp. To lose a marker here. And I'm going to ink her up and stamp her, mask her basically onto my mug. And when you take your mask away, there she is, all set to go on her witchy cup of morning coffee. Or in other words, have your coffee before your coffee and you're a little bit unpleasant. And this this one, I did the same thing and just stamped a cauldron on it. Now to color the mug, I want it to be sort of a soft green tone. And we get asked at shows a lot how to use the Tombow Blender. So I'm going to actually show you that. I'm going to start off by just coloring a little bit of gray on my mug. And I'm not worried if I get it in her hair. a little bit of the soft gray. So then 
I'm going to take my sort of mossy green color and my blender, which has no color. And I want basically a green that's lighter than the lightest mossy green, so that's where I would use the blender. You want to be a little careful because it can get too much fluid on your paper and pull up the nap of your paper. But it's about one of the few times I actually use the Tombow blender. So if you look, you can see that there's just a little bit of green on there. Not overwhelming, because if I colored the mug with this color green, it would be too green. And also it would detract from the witch if the mug was too bold. You can also take, if you want, and put a soft light color. This is that same teal I used in the web. And that adds a little color. Not too much, so you have the soft green in there, the soft teal. Now to color the witch, first thing you do is add cheeks. And I want to make her kind of a soft brown. So I'm going to take my teddy bear brown and use the blender and get it kind of inked up and color her in. So I got her kind of a brownie color and then I actually want her skin to be a little oranger than that so I'm going to take my blender and pick up a little bit of a golden orange and that's how I get her to have sort of a fun golden orange brownie sort of hue. And then you would color her hat and color her little body and throw some color in her hair. Sort of throw some blue in there. We're not blending it in. I wanted a little more of a pop. Go back to the teal. And I'm going to take this lime green. I'm going to get a little more wild with her hair than I did on the sample. Nothing says you have to color the same way every time. Take my soft brown. Soft, or the darker gray in the shadows to make it pop a little bit. And now it, her hair does not look nearly as lime, limey as it did. And then one thing I wanted her to do is pop off the mug. So I'm going to take my soft gray and just go around her a little bit and that pops the mug. And then you want your um, coffee to have some color and I forgot to get the brown out. So I'm going to take a brown tone. This one I'm not worried about blending. Got my coffee. And then I'm going to take and cut this out. Like that quickly. And I would layer these on a card rather than trying to mask them that way I can make sure they're all kind of straight and lined up. When I try to mask, I don't necessarily get them right where I want them each time. So here's three. I could take and add a fourth if I wanted. Now if you want the mugs behind to show through the handle, that is quite simple. Take your cutting mat, X-Acto knife, and simply just cut out the handle. So there's that. Let me move my knife so I can get myself cut. I did kind of forget to color the shadow on the handle. Oops. Dropped my marker. Okay, then you would move 
those. Layer your mug and you can see where you can see through. Now if you notice the card, if you, whoops, you can see if I chain, move it in the light, but I have glitter where the coffee should be. And I'm going to take my crystal lacquer. It's this product right here. When you're using it, you keep it upside down in a cup with a damp paper towel because it has a little fine tip on it that once it's just sitting here, five, ten minutes, it can be dried shut permanently. Now you can buy replacement tips for it, so if that happens, you're not stuck. But the way to keep it open is a cup with a damp paper towel. If you know you're using this for a while, stick the whole cup inside a Ziploc bag, this whole thing, and seal it up and that'll make sure your um, paper towel doesn't dry out. When you're done using it, I take the tip off, I run it under hot water, and I blow the lacquer out of the tip and get it as clean as I can, and then either tape off the top or put the lid on the bottle. Now you may be wondering why I have tape on mine, and that's simply because I have a tendency to squeeze too hard and shoot the tip off and leave a blob of lacquer. So I solved that problem by simply taping it on there. Now what I'm going to do with the lacquer is basically I'm going to use it as an adhesive. So I'm going to fill in the whole area of the coffee. And this is why I didn't bother blending the coffee too much because it's just going to get covered, but I want a base coat. And I'm going to take, oops, carefully don't stick your fingers in it. Take my glitter and I'm going to drop some glitter. And there's my coffee all glittered and set to go. So you would have three glittery cups of coffee. And then let me set this aside. It would take about half an hour to an hour to dry depending on how thick you apply it and how humid it is. But what I like using the crystal lacquer to apply glitter is simply because you can almost hear me scratching at it and very little comes off on your hands. It holds it very well so you don't end up with a glittery mess on your table or in your envelope when you're sending a card. Okay, so that is how to mask witches and other fun things on your cards. And there's a few other things, but I think we're going to stop and you will see the videos online or the cards online. Here's a tree that's all colored in and then I stamped and actually mounted the pumpkins onto the card. And this one, I stamped the pumpkins a couple times. If I can find where I put them. Here we go. And then I cut them out and layered them. And if I pull at this and show you, you can probably see, probably from the angle, that everything's cut out and layered. And then I put a little bit of glitter and dressed it up. This one has glitter on the little eyes and mouth, and I outlined things in crystal lacquer and then put the pumpkins. So that is September 2014 Project of the Month.